Call to order the November 6, 2024 meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, committee members will state their name before speaking. Ms. Siebel, please call the role of board members to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, Ms. Chike Kalu. Present. Thank you. Ms. Dominowski. Here. Thank you. Ms. Hen. Ms. Lichter. Present. Thank you. Ms. Pumphrey. And Ms. Booker Dwyer. Present. Thank you. Ms. Seabalt, please call the role of staff members on the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee participating in today's meeting. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bazemore. Uh, present. Thank you. Ms. Charlie Green. And are there any, any other staff members here? I don't see anyone. I think we're good. Perfect. You can advance the slide. Well, I am excited to kick off this new session of the Legislative Committee and welcome all the new members. I'm so excited that we had so many people wanting to join the committee. We almost have a <laughs> quorum of board members with six members who volunteered to join. So I definitely appreciate you all joining this committee. Next slide. And so because we're, we have some new people on the committee, um, I wanted to just first level set us in the purpose and measure of effectiveness. So it's displayed on the screen, but ultimately what this committee does is we review legislation that directly impacts either the board or the school system. And then we develop, legisl we develop legislative priorities and we develop recommendations for whether or not we um, want a, the board to provide comment, to provide testimony in support of a bill or uh, share information that can help to um, inform, to, to strengthen the information that's provided to our elected officials on a bill. And so we don't take direct action um, as a committee, we make recommendations that then go to the full board, and it is through the vote of the full board that any action is taken. Our measures of effectiveness, uh, we have two key things that we are charged with do doing. Number one is the legislative priorities. And number two, as bills come up, we'll share recommendations for the board to engage in that advocacy. So I um, just wanted to level set everyone on that on the purpose and measures of effectiveness. Are there any questions on the purpose or measures of effectiveness? Okay, next slide. And so for today's meeting, um, the, the key things that we want to do before we leave is first clarify the committee's purpose and me measures of effectiveness, which we just did. And then um, we're going to go over pre, um, some meeting topics, and um, these are very draft topics. So I definitely want your input in the topics, and also know that the topics may change depending on which bills are introduced. So this is a truly draft uh, version, and we'll discuss that. And we're also going to take a deep dive into how we connect with MAID's legislative advocacy. Um, so May, they, they do a lot of great work for school boards, and we typically connect with them on a lot of the work that they do. So, um, so we'll go over how we connect and how we engage, and then we'll start to think about what legislative priorities we, what, what we want. We won't leave the meeting today with a defined set of legislative priorities to take to the full board, um, so we'll do that at the next meeting, but at least to start to plant the seed as far as what legislative priorities um, should we start thinking about recommending to the board. Next slide. And so next we have the, um, the legislative session and dates of interest, and I am going to turn it over to our expert in all of this, uh, Mr. Bazemore, who's going to kind of walk us through some key dates. 
uh, uh, good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair, and to all the members that are here. Um, good to see everyone and looking forward to a really, really good session this year. Um, we thought it would be good to look at some some um, dates of interest that we can keep in mind as we move through the session uh, because the session is four months. And last year there was over a thousand bills. Um, 400 of those bills, more than 400 were education bills. So you can imagine it's fast and furious during the session. And there's certain key dates that we want to keep high, high in our mind as we move uh, through, through the session. Um, right now we're in, in November from November the 1st to November the 20th is pre-filing of bills. We've seen an uptick in that since um, uh, 2020 during COVID, uh, when we were doing everything virtual, a lot of the elected officials opted to pre-file bills and were, and were encouraged by the leadership. So since then, we've been seeing uh, a lot of bills being pre-filed. Um, there's a timeline for that, and it's November the 1st to, to, to the 20th to pre-file your bill. Um, and this is before the session start. Uh, and so we'll keep an eye on that as well. The session actually starts in January, January the 8th, um, uh, 2025. Uh, the General Assembly will convene. In February, the Senate, the Senate during the session, those who didn't pre-file their bills uh, can file their Senate bills, can introduce them February the 3rd. Um, on the House side, February the 7th is the time that they can introduce their bills during the session. Uh, March the 3rd is the final day for the introduction of those bills, meaning if um, a senator or delegate, and they're the only ones that can file legislation, if they don't get their bills bills in by March the 3rd, um, uh, then that bill will have a hard time getting through the, the process because what they'll do is refer any bills after March the 3rd to their, to their uh, rules committee. If it goes to rules committee, uh, it's not impossible to get your bill out of rules committee and get to the full floor, but it's, it's, it's uh, uh, more than likely they won't. So everyone tries to meet that March 3rd deadline to have their bills uh, in, in, in introduced. Um, also in March on the 17th, uh, we have what we call um, crossover day. That's when all, all the bills on the House side are crossed over to the Senate and vice versa. Um, if you um, want your bill to have a, a, a better chance of uh, being, uh, you know, making it to the floor and being and, and being um, approved, you you must send it to the other to the other side. They will work through it, and then both bills are sent to the to to the full committee. Um, that's not um, automatic. Sometimes doing crossover, if the bills don't line up exactly the same after committees work on it, they'll send that bill to a committee as well. Um, you 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 don't want that because again that adds more time and uh, you might not make it to, to, to the finish line. So that's an important date. Crossover date is a, is, is a big deal. Um, and then after that, April the uh, uh, 7th is, is what we call sign and die. At midnight um, is, is the close of business for, the, for that full month. You know, and again, I say it's fast and furious. Um, and at midnight sign and die, all the bills that make it that, 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 that are signed will, will then go to the governor uh, where the governor can support them or not. So that's a kind of overall, overall timeline. There's some other dates that we keep an eye on, but we thought these were the were the ones that we wanted to highlight. Thank but you, thank Mr. Bazemore. Yep. So any questions about the dates or what happens during any of these dates? Because we will be watching closely. You know, these are some very key dates um, for us at, with the legislative committee. Okay, so keeping these dates in mind, let's go to the next slide. And right now we have, um, this is just a, a high level overview of our upcoming meeting. So we're here at November 6th. Our next meeting is January 15th. And that meeting is after the start of the session. And so at that meeting, we'll review and discuss any bills that were pre-filed, any bills that um, were filed on, you know, closer to that, but prior to the 15th. And we will discuss if there's any needed action on those bills. So do we need to make recommendations for the board to provide testimony, to share information? 
Um, so we will do that on January 15th. We will also, um, maybe they typically put out great information. And so we will be on the lookout for whatever information Mabe puts out and we will review and discuss um, any of that information. And January 15th, another thing that we'll also do is um, our legislative priorities. We will have some discussion um, about those priorities as well. And then for the month of February and March, it's just going to be to review and discuss the status of bills that directly impact us. And then once again, make those recommendations if any needed actions are, um, are required, and then to review anything by MABE. And then in April, we will do a, a kind of review of the legislative session, discuss if there's things that we need to look out for for the, um, the next session, and we will just kind of close out um, our committee meetings. And while we have, you know, these dates posted, know that based on what bills come out, we may um, schedule additional meetings. So these right now are the, the key meetings, but depending on how this session goes, we may have to schedule meetings in between. And so I want to pause here to see, are there any other topics that you want to see added to any of these, um, to the meetings that we have right now, or anything else you want to see done by a certain date? Uh, yes, Ms. Pumphrey. And welcome, Ms. Pumphrey. Thank you. Sorry, I was late. Um, I don't see anything specifically, but like you just mentioned, I think we just have to be aware and pay attention because if something critical comes up, um, it may be that we need to address it prior to, um, you know, make sure we're ahead of the game. Um, so just, I just think paying attention and making sure we meet sooner if needed is uh, necessary. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and talk about our, um, you know, we absolutely love working with the Maryland Association of Boards of Education. Uh, we always look to their legislative priorities first, and then based off of their legislative priorities, we then uh, craft ours because we don't want to be redundant or we don't want to duplicate what they already have. So if you look at our last set of legislative priorities, we said we support the MABES legislation priorities, and these are the three key ones for Baltimore County. Um, and so, Mr. Baysmore, could you give us a little bit more information about MABE and their priorities and um, give us a little overview of that? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, and I, and I, wanted, I want to say on the outset that MABE is well, well respected in Annapolis, well connected, and do a lot of great work for the 24 LEAs, uh, which includes Baltimore um, County uh, School Board. And we work very closely with them. Uh, we meet uh, with them monthly. Um, we are represented uh, on the MABE committee by Madam Chair and Madam Vice Chair Pumphrey. They do an excellent job of uh, representing us uh, in Annapolis with MABE. We try to stay lined up with MABE uh, on our uh, testimony, on our advocacy, and we all try to work as a as a collective, as a as a group. The 24 LEAs. Um, there are times when that we may not line up exactly, and that's when we will look at those individual bills ourselves and 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 take a stance based on what's good for um, Baltimore, Baltimore County Public Schools. Um, we coordinate uh, with them on testimony. Uh, as an individual, you can testify in Annapolis as an individual. Um, but to represent the school board, you know, that that goes to the full board and through Madam Chair and, and Vice Chair, and then we have a process for that. But if if an individual has a particular bill that they want to testify on as an individual and not a board member, you know, you just have to state that if you if you send in written testimony or or testify, you have to let them know that I'm speaking solely for myself and not and, and not as a as, as a board member. But we try to stay um, together, and it usually works out pretty good that uh, we're all lockstep and on one one accord uh, when when we're in Annapolis during during the session. Um, I, th I, th I think the other thing I would like to say is is that during the session we are um, also well represented by elected officials. We have key legislators on the Senate and House side that have um, uh, leadership positions in Annapolis, 
um, and they chair committees and other things. That makes life um, a lot easier for us to have Baltimore County elected officials well represented down there and, and in senior positions because sometimes it's it's about the relationships that we have and being able to uh, uh, pick up the phone and talk to our representatives down there and, and you know and they be our advocates as well. So we have those relationships, Madam Chair and Vice Chair, they have those relationships as well. And so we try to cultivate that and work with our local elected officials uh, in Annapolis as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Baysmore. So let's go to the next slide and let's start the discussion about our priorities. Last year, we had three key priorities. So in addition to supporting everything that MAID does, we had three key priorities um, around reducing class size, expanding out of school time learning, and um, innovative school schedules. For 2025, I, and I just want to open the floor up. Are there any, is, is there anything that you feel like as a board we should focus on or have a priority for? Hi, this is Jane. This is Ms. Lichter. Yes, Ms. Lichter. Um, and I don't know how to phrase it, and I don't know if this even meets a legislative priority, so I, I apologize ahead. But the whole um, blueprint funding. Um, it's something with along the lines of what we were talking about or what Dr. Rogers was presenting it and Ms. Dominowski asked the follow-up question on Monday night as far as the mandates or the underfunded mandates. So I don't know how we phrase that or if that fits under this category, but that would be something that is on my mind. That definitely fits and we can wordsmith that a little bit. Um, and I'm hopeful, I'm, I know that last year in Mabe's their legislative priorities, they supported the, the full funding um, for uh, public schools and, and they made reference to the blueprint, but I do think it will be important that we highlight that as well, because that is a huge concern with um, having to meet the blueprint requirements and um, and not really don't know if we're going to have the funds. And I'm, I'm especially thinking about, you know, we're, we have to implement a, the career a career ladder, um, and it requires additional uh, stipends for teachers and leaders on different levels of the career ladder. And the state is supposed to subsidize par a portion of that funding. And so I am hopeful that that would still be the case. Um, so things like that, I definitely agree with. So we will um, blueprint funding, we will wordsmith, and we'll bring back something for, for you all to react to. Thank Ms. you. Stemina. Ms. Dominowski. I think uh, Ms. Pumphrey had her hand up first. Oh, Ms. Pumphrey. Thank you. It just, it's okay. Just uh, along the lines with what you were saying already, um, I did want to say that I believe um, Mabe is really active in the blueprint um, funding arena. So I think what what they um, will, what their priorities say as, as far as blueprint funding will align with um, our thinking as well. Ms. Dominowski. Uh, I was just going to say, I'm not sure again how to word it either, but just um, bills or a legislature that's focused on, um, you know, student improvement and uh, focuses on rewarding that and moving towards moving those goals, moving those um, outcomes up as opposed to, you know, um, you know, making something happen for, for money funding wise. I would like to see, you know, more, you know, wording legislature as, you know, we need to see this improvement in our schools or, you know, these um, these rates moving up, these numbers moving up, you know, year after year. OK, so something around student improvement and when you say rewarding student improvement, um, what are you thinking about as far as rewarding student improvement? I'm probably not saying it correctly. Okay. I, I don't not re like not necessarily rewarding, but like um, encouraging or, um, you know, focus goal oriented on. Uh, student improvement, like a, a bill that is total is focused on what is best for the students, moving their proficiencies, their rates higher, improving their um, outcomes. So when they graduate or finish, or you know the the higher literacy rates, the higher math rates, the higher you know total education. Okay, 
So we'll wordsmith something for everybody to react to. So that's okay. So we have blueprint, we have student improvement, anything else? Can I ask a follow up question to Mr. Manowski's um, priority? Do, yes. do you mean like incentivizing um, Mr. Manowski? Is that what you mean that counties would get increased funding for improved outcomes? Possibly. I'm not I, I'm not sure what I mean exactly. It's just I'd like to see more of, you know, as opposed to, you know, we have to have, um, you know, pre-K three and to kindergarten by 2020, all these classes, which is great. And it's something that will improve. But I'd like to also see, hey, we need to see improvements year after year in these grade levels because that we need the trends to go up every year, not down or, you know, definitely not down. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? I think so. Maybe. Thank you. I mean, I guess it would be. I mean, if you're, I mean, no, I would. I, I mean, I mean, you would have to tie it to funding in some way. I'm not sure how, but just I'd like to see the focus more on our students and their outcomes. Okay. Direct outcomes. Mm -hmm. So we'll make a draft of some of some language, and then we can play around with the words. So I have two things. So number one, um, we know that last night the the bill to expand the county council, that's very exciting. Um, but there is question about the the composition of the school board and what will happen there. And so I do think it would be great if we had, um, if we start thinking about that, so that we could make recommendations. And so um, so with the you know revised maps and all of that, we we can think about um, what perhaps we would want to see happen with the school board and how that's put together. Um, so I know that's one thing that I, I would love to uh, to to dive into. And I always love flexibility with school calendars. And so I would love to uh, see the school calendar uh, law modify instead of having the days and hour requirement to make it an or, then that will give more flexibility to how we can craft our school calendar. I know that we had um, some robust discussion around the pre and post Labor Day. Um, but the bigger issue is really we are confined with days and hours, and then you you put on top of that um, things in with our in our contractual agreements with teachers and administrators. We are um, the, the calendar pretty much shapes itself. So if we can at least make a modification to days or hours, it'll give more flexibility um, to and more creativity to the school calendar. Are there any other topics that uh, you want to, or priorities that you would like to see? Okay, so the next steps, we'll come back with a draft set of priorities based off of our discussion today, and then we can make some modifications, we'll tweak it, um, and we'll we'll review it, and then once we're all in agreement, or we have the majority in agreement, we'll then send it to the board, to the full board, uh, to review and to provide input and to see if they would, um, if they are in agreement, and if if we're going to adopt these priorities. Okay. Next slide. So this was a quick meeting today. Oh wait, go back a slide. So Ms. Chika Kalu, um, from the student lens, just think about if there's anything that any type of advocacy you want specifically for student board members or for students that we can include in the priorities, or if you want, um, you know, a special highlighted section for, you know, this is the voice of the students, this is what the students really want. Um, and so that's something to think about. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Chika Kalu. I was, was going to say, I could definitely think about that, but 
I wanted to add that since I was working with other LEAs and just state boards across the nation, Baltimore County is pretty progressive in the amount of rights that student board members have. So <laughs> there wasn't much with like legislation that I was really thinking particular to our Board of Education in terms of just the SMOB role, but I can definitely look out in a broader scope when it comes to just student voice in general. But with the student board member and our rights, no, no, we are the most advanced second to Montgomery County and PG County. Yes, we have had some great student board members who have, they've advocated heavy, um, they, they've advocated for a lot of things. So you are absolutely right. Um, so they've made your job for this session a little easy, but if there's anything else that comes up, uh, we can definitely include it. If there's any other rights or if students are really passionate about something, um, we definitely want to know. Like if students are really passionate about going to school year round, let us know and we can include that in the priorities. I will definitely <laughs> add that too, but I have heard <laughs> conversations from students about that as well. Yes, I know. I know a lot of students are not, but um, but just thinking outside of the box for for calendars and, and just the overall school experience um, is something that, you know, we can always advocate for. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I have the next meeting. I will have my long list of things I've heard from students. Perfect. Okay, next slide. All right, so this was a pretty quick meeting. I wasn't sure how long the conversation around the uh, the priorities would go, and we know we're we're still pretty early on around um, bill filing or MABE releasing their legislative priorities or TAPCO releasing their legislative priorities. But once they do, we will definitely um, review them and use all of that to inform our priorities. <clears throat> And so the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next legislate, leg, legislative and governmental relations committee meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, January 15th, 2025 at 4.30 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. You. Madam Have Vice Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.